Who want one last trip to the long trail? Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today I have a few more topics that I want to talk about. I think some of these are really cool. So much potential in these and I just want to share my thoughts on them. The first one is about a news article from Event Hubs. Now, I was just happy when I seen this. It says, Tearless for Tekken 7's final balance patch released by the main man Sui. Now, the reason why I was happy to see this is because I think this is one of the first times I seen Event Hubs talk about a Tekken content creator. They're always talking about Street Fighter, you know, Daigo, Guilty Gear Strive, Mortal Kombat, you know, what Sonic Fox is doing. So just to see them talking about a Tekken YouTuber, a Tekken content creator, I was happy to see this. But also, this kind of ties into another thing. In the past, when I did my reaction to his tier list, I was kind of just expanding upon the Yoshimitsu uh, play style, the Yoshimitsu um, experience, right? There was a part in there where Mei Sui said, the most difficult characters in the game uh, are the most powerful. And I was saying, if that was true, Yoshimitsu would be the best character in the game, which he's not, right? In his tier list, he put, he put Yoshimitsu like, I believe it was like third from the worst, the third worst character in the game. And it's kind of baffling because I know I said this already, but Brian Fury and Akuma, which usually those three are, the, are considered the hardest characters in the game. Those characters, Brian Fury and Akuma, they're in S and A. Meanwhile, Yoshimitsu's in D at the bottom, right? I have a poll here that I also want to talk about. Is Yoshi easy to play in your opinion? Just started relearning him after years of breaks. He used to be my main in Tekken 3 slash 5. 498 votes. 27 says easy AF. 48, not easy, but also not hard. 140, this is when the numbers get up there. 140, he's quite hard to play. 135, easy to learn, hard to master. 148 says, I don't know, show me the results. Now, what I think is kind of interesting about this, easy to learn and hard to master. I think that's really Tekken overall. Regardless of which character you pick, you, it is easy to learn, hard to master. Because here's the thing, what's difficult about Tekken 7 is not learning a character. It's not learning the move list. Yes, it's different for different characters. Some characters have 70 moves, some characters has 120. So it is different there, give or take. But what I think where the hard to master comes is in matchups, is in how your character reacts to other characters, especially with Yoshimitsu. Since he's one of the worst characters in the game, a lot of the pressure falls on you as a player. Whereas if you pick Fakumram, Fakumram takes care of all the pressure. Some of his moves, when you block it, you can't even punish it because your character's arms versus Fakumram arms is like, Fakumram has like twice the reach. So he really does take a lot of pressure off of the player. But Yoshimitsu, he really doesn't do that. And I just want to talk about this poll and also the Event Hubs news article for that reason. But Another thing that I seen, this is when I was just scrolling the front page of Reddit. It says, name a bigger menace than this dude. In all of fiction, I'll wait. And it's a picture of Aaron Yeager. Um, he's standing in that sort of between, I, I can't remember what it's called, but basically where the founding tree is at, you know, the, the realm with Ymir. I'm not gonna go into the details because I don't really want to spoil and blah, 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 blah. But the reason why I'm talking about this is because it made me think about Kazuya in Tekken 8. Kazuya in Tekken 8, he really is built up, or in Tekken 7, he really was built up to be this dominant force. Right now, he defeated Heiachi, who's in control of the Mishima Zaibatsu. And I'm really, really praying that Kazuya takes control of both the Mishima Zaibatsu and G Corporation because it's never been done. Neither, none of the Mishimas has ever controlled both. It's always been in control of this one and someone else has the other one. But I think to truly build up Kazuya as the main threat, as the big bad that has to be taken down, give him complete power. Give him the Mishima Zaibatsu 
and the G Corporation. That way, Jin, he really has to sort of like, he need everything he can get to be able, not only to defeat him, but even to be able to reach him. Because that's the thing, the Mishima Zaibatsu is global. G Corporation is global. You merge those two entities and the person in control is basically untouchable. So Jin would have to do so much to even get to Kazuya. I think that is amazing because here's the thing. A lot of people say it's not about the destination. It's more so about the journey. And I think the journey of seeing Jin rise out the dirt, right? Tekken 7, he really was just KO'd. He was sleeping in a helicopter because of Zell. Um, because of his fight with Azel. So he pretty much was out of it the whole game. And I think it would be amazing to see him climb up out of the ashes, meet all of these different characters, Leroy, Lita, Fakamram, right? Just go around the world trying to gain knowledge and insight and learn so he could one day defeat Kazuya. I think it's really gonna be incredible. And this picture here of Aaron Yeager just made me think about Kazuya because their, their stories is kind of similar in a way. Aaron Yeager, he started off as this defenseless, you know, a normal kid until one day the walls got destroyed and that changed him forever. Kazuya, he was a normal kid, a normal boy until one day Hiachi threw him off a cliff. Both of those characters went through a traumatic experience in their childhood and that put them on this path of destruction. And really, I think Aaron Yeager is the biggest menace that you can possibly think of. He does some crazy stuff in the story, but also I want Kazuya to also be a menace. I want him to really let loose in Tekken 8 and give us something to fear, right? I want to fear this character. I want... Really, I want him to kill off someone. <laughs> I, I know it's it's kind of controversial when you say, oh, I want this character to die or I want this character to be killed off, but he has to do it. In order to get that real shock value, that real fear, Kazuya has to really let loose and I want him to have some new tricks. I don't know, I just, seeing this picture made me think about Tekken 8 and what the possibilities uh, are, you know? I'm hoping they really make Kazuya a true villain at the end of the story i want to fear him yet idolize him let's move on to the next tweet that i have it says after the reaction to tekken bloodline netflix really needs to take the hint that people are way more into their animated ad adaptations than their live action ones now the four pictures they have i've seen two of these i'm planning on watching the other two now here's the thing about netflix the Castlevania show was incredible. Even though I feel like season, I think they're on season four. I think it gets worse as the seasons go on. Season one was incredible. Season two was very good. Season three, uh, I started to fall asleep during it and stuff, but I think that show is incredible. Also, when you talk about Arcane, Arcane, this has been said many times, not even by me, just by other people who really do movies and breakdowns and talk about movies. A lot of people have said this was the best show to come out of 2021. Yeah, the show is really good. I think honestly, it's probably my favorite thing that I've watched all year. So yeah, I'm gonna give this uh, another 9.5 out of 10. It's really close to a 10. I might end up changing my mind later. And I would agree, Arcane is truly phenomenal. And that's why when I seen the Tekken Bloodline series announced by Netflix, I had no doubts in them because their track record is perfect. Their track record is amazing when it comes to anime. They do not miss, they rarely miss when it comes to anime. And I think the potential in Tekken 3, it's like they have so much untapped potential. I'm gonna watch Cuphead sometime this week, I don't know, but Tekken Bloodline, so much potential, so much hype because we see their track record. Ar Arcane was so good, was so successful that you have League of Legends players, they say, stop trying to play the game just because you like the show. And I feel like it's gonna be the same thing for Tekken. 
Tekken Bloodline is going to be so good that there's so many players coming into Tekken. We're going to be like, stop. So many scrubs, so many green ranks now. You guys stop coming to the game. We get you like the show, but stop trying to play. It's, it's like, that's how good Arcane was. It really inspired people to play League of Legends, even though they never have before, right? But let's move on. Also, a interesting detail that was discovered or really just pointed out by X-U-D-E-L-I-Z. I don't know how to pronounce the Reddit name, so there it is spelled out. It says, is this a generic stance or a Wing Chun thing? Leroy's back to parry, Jin's down back one plus two. Would it be a twist if Leroy ever teaches Jin anything in the movie? Now the pictures they have attached to this post is basically you have a picture of Leroy Smith and Jen both doing the parry. And you can see the foot stance, the hand movements is ex exactly the same. And this made me think, is Leroy Smith going to teach him this? Also, would the community like that? Just knowing how the community is, I feel like people would hate on it. Oh, why is Leroy Smith teaching them this? Uh, we hate Leroy, Leroy, nerf Leroy, right? People won't be able to see the art behind it, sort of the, the thought process behind it. But me personally, I think that would be crazy if Leroy Smith taught him this. Because you have to think about it. In the show, Tekken Bloodline, Jin is going to be 15 years old, right? He's going to run into Leroy Smith at some point who still has gray hair. We don't know how exactly old he will be but he has great hair so that means he's still some kind of wing chun master you have to assume that this 15 year old will try to learn something from leroy smith and i think what if leroy smith his most annoying move the parry the the godlike parry he's untouchable he teaches that to jen and that is why he has it i think that would be in Incredible. Now, are they going to do that? I don't know. It would be godlike if they had that kind of foresight, but I think that would be amazing. Because going back to the question, is this a Wing Chun stance? Is this specifically a Wing Chun move that they're doing? Or is this just a normal karate parry that's kind of a universal thing? Because if it's universal, then that kind of scraps the idea of Leroy Smith teaching it to him but if this is Wing Chun that Jen is doing then you have that that possibility I just think it's it's going to be even though a lot of people is hating on Leroy being there I think that adds so much more potential because Tekken 3 is so old we all know that story like the back of our hand so the fact that they're putting in leroy smith and they're putting in these elements that we don't not that we don't understand that means the story won't be predictable we won't be able to sit there and just be like oh yeah i knew that was gonna happen oh yeah i knew that was gonna happen it's cool though but i knew that was gonna happen like the fact that they're putting in these characters and these elements that weren't there at the beginning just means that's so much more for us to learn and explore that's just how I see it, right? The final thing that I want to talk about, it's a tweet that says, do you think Tekken 8 will get an official trailer at EVO 2022? 43% says yes, 56% says no. Now, I think no. I think Tekken 8 will be announced at E3, but if Tekken 8 is announced at E3 and the GeForce leak says it comes out in December, if it does comes out in de in December, that would be really cool if they did a second announcement at EVO. They can announce gameplay, they can show... Because here's the thing we have to remember. For Tekken 7, when that game came out, they had multiple different trailers. They had the first trailer where they showed Akuma. They had a trailer for Yoshimitsu, for Bob. I think Brian Fury had his own character uh, trailer. They had a Lucky Chloe had a trailer. So... They're not just going to do one trailer, then the game is out. They're going to have many different trailers if they do what Tekken 7 did. And I think, yes, we may not get the official reveal at EVO, but I think we still will get something at, because it's EVO, right? Just because you have E3 doesn't mean that EVO is pointless. So I think we will get something there, but it just it's not going to be the reveal. The reveal will be sooner than then, right? 
but I just wanted to talk about that because a lot of people Tekken 7 being revealed announced was such a long time ago that we sort of forget these details and we forget that there was multiple different trailers right so I just want to talk about that as well just to refresh some of you guys' mind but that's it hopefully you guys enjoyed this video thanks for watching and I'll see you next time Why are you so